Like his church, Port Elizabeth welcomes you. Previous videos are accessed by typing Sifri Duva, YouTube, and here's my phone number. In last week's video, I asked, how often have you been disappo faced disappointment in prayer? And maybe one of the reasons is that we don't pray intelligently. I thought it might be helpful to use an example. As the merchants like to say, terms and conditions apply. Just a quick reminder of the graphic that we used in John 14 verses 12 and 13. It says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these he shall do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Very powerful words, whatever you ask. And so what I want to do is I want to focus on this part here, the process. What must I do? What must I learn? In Exodus 3 verse 8, And I am coming down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, to bring them out of the land to a good land, a large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. God saw the struggle that the people were facing and he stepped in to come and make a difference in their lives. And of course, in this process, life starts getting even tougher for the Israelites because they had were under slavery and more trouble came upon their path but God was working and then eventually after the last plague the Passover the, Egypt, the Egyptians released the Israelites and the way to the promised blessing now even became an issue the huge crowd of Israelites walking in the desert and the Egyptians trapped them at the Red Sea crossing by this time, the Israelites had forgotten about the promise and are focused on their current troubles. They are at a point where they would rather go back to being slaves, as we saw in Exodus 14, 12. Even Moses had enough. And then Jehovah said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Speak to the sons of Israel that they may go forward. You see, the Red Sea crossing was 100 meters deep and they were fearful. And sometimes we tend to stop and God says, move ahead because the blessing is still coming. And then what happens is once they got through, the whole Egyptian army was destroyed and drowned. With hindsight, we can see that along the way to the blessing that God was teaching the Israelites about himself, God was showing that he had everything under control. They just needed to trust. Along the way, God gave them his provision. They were given the Ten Commandments and the tabernacle was established, all pointing to having a relationship with his people. They get to Canaan and decide to send 12 spies to the land to see what was going on. In Numbers 13, Caleb and Joshua say, let's go, we, this is our land, it's full of blessing. And the other 10 just saw obstacles in the land. Sadly, the majority will always see obstacles. In a sense, we are all dealing with sin. If sin has a majority share in our lives, we will easily be despondent because all we see are the giants. The two saw the promise clearly. They remembered how God drowned the whole Egyptian army without them even lifting a finger. In Numbers 14, 29, the Israelites were sent back into the wilderness in order for those that rebelled to die off. And so they wandered around for 40 years, all because they did not believe God's promise. Sadly, many Christians follow this path. They become a Christian and they just live because they don't want to get into the God's promise. Yes, God does provide. But if you want to eat manna and quail and wander in the desert for the rest of your spiritual life, 
That is your choice. Satan is constantly working to discourage us that we don't get into God's promised blessing. Imagine being that close and then missing out on the promise, all because they didn't believe God could do it. This God that created the whole universe and even down to the smallest atom. In this process, God was constantly providing and leading the Israelites, building relationship. God's promise to us needs to be like a nameplate on their desk, a constant reminder, a goal. You know what they say, if you aim for nothing, you'll hit it. After those that had rebelled had passed away, the new generation, as it were, took hold of the promised land. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 and other scriptures talk about God's renewal process within us. And that's the purpose why we go through the wilderness. So when that renewal takes hold of us, the blessing becomes clearer and closer. Yes, the promised land had its challenges, but with the clear hand of God's forward working, each of the challenges brings us back to the prayer request. In this pattern is like a cycle. When we face a challenge, we get redeemed. God closes the sea on our enemies. And then we grow in understanding about God and eventually come into the promised land, into the promises that God has for us. This is one of the reasons why we need to pray intelligently and work through all these steps. Understanding God's desire for a deeper relationship with us. The blessing needs to grow that we may be a blessing. Shall we pray? Yes, Lord, sometimes we get discouraged because we don't understand what prayer does and how to pray. We thank you for the examples of the Israelites that we can use and Lord, we can see of how abundantly you bless the Israelites, those that remain true and focused on your promise. And so, Lord, when we go through life and things get tough, we pray that you give us that energy to continue to see your promise fulfilled in our lives so that we don't live in the humdrum of just being a nominal Christian, but being a Christian that sees a God that is a mighty and at work. We thank you for this, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.